Sometimes people, I don't look at my phone every hour of every waking moment of my day. I sometimes have it in a different, I don't always look at my phone. That's, that's right. Crazy. That's right. Sometimes people intentionally haven't seen your texts. Yeah. Um, sometimes but, people avoid their phone. <laughs> yeah. On the off because chance they the see a text. It's distracting to be constantly getting noises from your phone, whether it's texts or other stuff, alerts. All right. All right. <sighs> but Heath. How do you know where to get a deal on CBD gummies <laughs> if you don't <laughs> check every text? God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I haven't quite sobered up since Eli suggested it. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. I had some milk and some toast, and I'm ready to talk about this vague resemblance to a movie. Let's do this. <laughs> And, of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? thanksgiving tacular. Is it? Is that what this was? Pumpkin pie. thanksgiving tacular. Thanksgiving never really got referenced. No, they and I don't think the pie. suffix tacular belongs anywhere near this fucking movie. I'm going to be honest with you. Baking montage tacular. There you go. Okay. All right. That I can roll with. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Pumpkin Pie Wars. It's the story of the bloody gang wars in <laughs> Vanilla Plains, Ohio. <laughs> Milk Toast, Ohio. Between rival bakeries and their control of the world's pie economy. <laughs> so, you know how Gangs of New York was great, but um, they, it was full of stuff that mattered yeah. to, to the <laughs> yep. plot. They yep. fixed it. They dialed everything from 11 to down to three. <laughs> yes. Then down, then down to one, zero. And then they, they made a movie about it. It's about pie. It's Meringues of New York. <laughs> Everybody calm down. Oh, I was waiting for it. Oh, I was so ready for it. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the baking montages of the Food Network, but you hate how sometimes you have to watch multiple scenes in a movie to know what it's about. <laughs> you will love this movie. It's t TV for dementia. Yeah. Yeah. But boring dementia, but dementia that doesn't want a lot of yeah. excitement. Yeah. You don't want grandma to lose the plot, but you also don't want her to get too excited to have a 16th heart attack. The yeah, movie. Ex exactly. The whole thing's just like, hey, relax. Hey, watch this. Relax. <laughs> yeah, relax. right. No, dial down to three. The movie is perfect. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> These go up to three. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's not yep. get crazy here. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. Uh, we already started talking about it. Best worst generic brand movie. This is brand <laughs> X movie. Yeah. Every element. It's just a vague, low level version of a movie thing. And they sort of made it into one of their things. Just one quick example. It's a feud between two families. That's what this movie's about. Mm -hmm. And they're called the Harpers and the McCarthy's because they couldn't get the rights to the Hatfields and the McCoy's. <laughs> <laughs> they're the Harpers and the McCarthy's in Ohio. Which also means that when they were writing this, someone was like, because <laughs> it's an H and an M. I don't know if a lot of people will pick that up, but that's a good one. That's, <laughs> that's some quality filmmaking. I'm it a filmmaker. Is. Steven Spielberg's some a filmmaker. Both filmmakers. Brand X wordplay right there. I yep. mean, yeah, right. No, I'm going to go. I'll give you another great example, right? Because this is a love story. And in every love story, the two people who are falling in love have to have a wedge driven between them at some point. You know, some misunderstanding, something overheard and misinterpreted or whatever has to drive a wedge between them. So this movie, it does that seven and a half minutes before it ends, and they resolve it by just, hey, did, is this what you meant when my sister overheard you saying this? Oh, no, not at all. No. Oh, That's, there's a misunderstanding yeah. of when you overheard. Oh, oh good. okay. Should we end the movie? Great. Yep. Great. Wow. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm glad you clarified. That could have gone well above a three. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> you saw that dial started to move towards three. No, no, no. We're just going to keep it right here at two. That was great. That was four territory, if I may say so myself. <laughs> 
All right, so I was going to go with best worst community entertainment. <laughs> so apparently in Vanilla Plains, Ohio, not only do they all gather in large crowds to watch people bake for an hour, but they do it over and over again in rounds. This is like a round robin hour long pumpkin pie <laughs> bake off that the entire town comes to and stays at all day. Yeah. Dutch madness. <laughs> <laughs> This is their Super Bowl. <laughs> and look, I get why Trump won these flyover states <laughs> if this is what they had. Right? Like, I'd want to burn it all down, too, if the height of my year was, oh, I hope that doesn't burn. Honey, can we buy a gun? Yes, very easily. I don't know why we're here then. Pip, pip. <laughs> Bring me back Vishnu. All right, I'm going to go with best worst. College product placement. Uh, wait, which one? Wharton. Okay. Wharton College. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So this is very important. There are two scenes in this movie where Wharton College is mentioned 475 <laughs> yes. times and then never again. It's like Wharton bought a 60 second ad read on a podcast, but inside a Hallmark movie. And they were just like, yeah, you can make up whatever you want. Just say Wharton 104 times in eight seconds if you want this $6. It's bizarre. Yeah, Trump's alma mater was embarrassed by this movie. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there's some damn intense kneading on the other side of the break, so we're going to keep it brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the inconsequential circumstances that are... Pumpkin Pie Wars. And so I says to her, but you're a porn star. Right? What a prude. Good morning, boys. Good morning, Mr. Spreitzberg. Good morning, Mr. Spreitzberg. So, how's that new porno script coming along? You know, pumpkin cream pie. Oh, it's going to be great, sir. It's yeah, be great. Re really hot stuff. Oh, yeah. We got some MILF stuff in there. You got your classic gonzo shoot. There's a... Little uh, tough lawyer sister in there. I like mm -hmm. it. And you know what? We got two golfing dads, if you know what I mean. That sounds right. excellent. Okay. So uh, which you guys wrote the plot and uh, which you wrote the fuck stuff? I wrote the uh, plot. I wrote the plot. What? No, what? I, I, I was writing the plot on this one. No, no. We said I was writing the yeah, plot. Boys, I wrote the boys, plot. boys, are you telling me I've got two halves of a porno script with no fuck stuff? Ah. Uh. I guess we are. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. You, sorry. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to call the Hallmark Channel. What? Gross. No. Have some dignity. Seriously. <laughs> How much cum should we use? <laughs> Quarter cup. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to open, of course, on a pumpkin patch. And with me screaming, I'd love to get further than the title font before I knew how bad it was. Just once. <laughs> <laughs> the, the CGI pumpkin patch. Yes! <laughs> the laziest thing. It's so bad. Oh, I'll give you I a actually, fucking pumpkin patch. Oh, my God. It's so rough. <laughs> it's mirrored. I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's really, really bad. But then I read in the trivia thing on IMDb, and I went back and looked, and it's like they, they had the energy to make three pumpkins yes. and then they just like flipped them yes. and turned them sideways and then just put four of them in a clump without even like <laughs> separating them just on top of each other. Negatives so of rough. a pumpkin. Also, we should probably explain. We got a beautiful hellscape uh, by accident. The version of this that is on YouTube oh, yeah. <laughs> is for some reason without background music at selected moments. So all of our notes at the beginning are just, what the fuck is happening? Because it's the sound is there, but the background music has been cut. I think because that's how they got away with uploading it to yeah, YouTube. Exactly. So it's just yeah. like crunch, swift, squunch. Oh, but a seriously. Hallmark movie without like do 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 yeah, do in the background. Damn night. Is it's yeah. just there will be blood. <laughs> My first two notes are, this is terrifying. What the fuck is <laughs> happening? I was so scared. I, I thought I was about to get murdered by a clown or yes. something. It was so scary. It's amazing how nightmarish the simplest shit can become when you change the music. But yeah, 
And I need that to be all Hallmark movies from now on. That's our new brand. We just relaunch all Hallmark movies without background music and put them under the horror category. Oh, there you we'll go. Make yeah. Millions. yeah. But then little bursts of sound. Right, right. You like, have to have the burst. Go to the pumpkin and then go back to the <laughs> It's so scary. <laughs> all right. But eventually we cut to the finals of the big bake off. Now, what we've got here is lifelong friends Lydia and Faye are in the finals, but they're not lifelong friends anymore, and they're talking shit. My notes here just say, I've never felt worse for making Noah learn all the characters' names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, here's Lydia and Faye and Jenny and Pam. Pip! <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I have no concept of the names of these people. None. Never at any point. <laughs> White people. <laughs> White. White. Yep. That's the movie. There's not a single person of color in this movie. Mm -mm. Not one. Not even, there's like a restraining order. Yeah. <laughs> there's like a radius. Ooh, now that's a, t this movie is post the race war. So this is post race war, Ohio. It explains why no one has any good entertainment. Come yeah, on. Yeah, right, right. They got to settle for the pumpkin pie bake off, which is what we're watching now. And this will be pivotal to the movie. So here's what happened. Faye or uh, Lydia's dad Gave her the money to open. <laughs> Sorry. Faye and Lydia. Just I want to repeat that. <laughs> Faye and Lydia are the names of these characters. Go ahead. No, please sum up this scene without sounding like you're having to sum up your boring wife's <laughs> drama and pretending to care about it. And then what did Lydia say? <laughs> cool. No. That was a snappy, snappy comeback yeah. to Faye's original point. <laughs> wow. Pip. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so Lydia's dad has given her the money to open a bakery, but I guess on the condition that Faye is not involved in it. Where is that backstory? <laughs> yeah, the, the two of them were going to open a bakery together, but now Lydia's opened her own bakery, and Faye is going to open a spite bakery right across the street. <laughs> And look, I'm not saying spite businesses are a bad idea. They're how I make my living. But maybe it doesn't work as well for bakeries as it does for podcasting. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the exchange here. Faye or whoever the fuck says, oh, you're going to start your own spite bakery? Is that a threat? And then Lydia's like, it's a dare. I'm daring myself. Okay, well, you didn't escalate. That's not an escalation, dare and threat. You didn't do it. Right? And then the other one has to be like, okay, well, I guess this is war because you fucked up your line and titled movie has wars in it. It's a war. <laughs> Pumpkin Great. pie. Dare. Shit. Dup. <laughs> threat. I need, I need more lithium. Yes. <laughs> Pumpkin level orange dark 30. Nope. No. And so the, they declare war on each other and we see the husbands do the like, I guess we can't be friends anymore. I guess not, Reg. And I just want to say, Reg and Max, the only characters whose names I learned, are the gay love story <laughs> this movie needs. Well, it eventually oh, they're gets, fucking. Yeah. They're all the way fucking. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't want absolutely. to spoil it, but uh, it pays off in a pretty big way. Yeah, no, this is a prequel to Grace and Frankie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way it pays off is they're yeah, fucking. Exactly. Yeah. Spoilers. A lot. All right. So then we cut to 10 years later. We're, we are going to start off at Faye's Bakery and we get a little like a montage of bakery shots where everything just looks like lard. It's so it's gross. There's the best difference between the three of us oh. on this podcast because me and Heath are like, ooh, yummy. And, Heath <laughs> like, and Noah's like, this looks disgusting. <laughs> and then the pour over coffee going mm -hmm. with the like the rack. With the things so you could do like flights of poor. Oh, oh, yeah. Lard. All right. So we see. And Lard. We see Faye. <laughs> uh, we realize that she hasn't aged over the past decade, which is uh, fascinating. And she's walking through her bakery and she looks down and she goes, Why, that's a dangerous tripwire I have here in my bakery. I sure do need to fix that. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Is that an abandoned landmine? Yeah. I'll get to that on Thursday. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> so she goes in the back where her hot adult daughter, Casey, I have to put adult in there when I say hot at the beginning, is in the back working on the books. And this is another great example of like, there's no stakes to this movie and they need to establish financial trouble. So she's like, mom, we've got to cut these expensive costs. Cupcakes? Numbers. <laughs> yeah. Numbers to... are big. 
on this left. Only chocolate and vanilla cupcakes from now on. No more <laughs> solid gold cupcakes. We got to cut that from the Learned product at, line. At business school. Wharton. Yeah, at Wharton. <laughs> Where'd you go to business school? Wharton. Wharton? Wharton. Where's that? Wharton. Is that a part of Penn? It's Wharton. Makes it technically Ivy League. Wharton. Technically um, Ivy League? Great. So, yeah, but we learn here if they get the big hotel account, they'll be good because all those continental breakfasts they'll be baking. Yeah. Okay. The Fuckeye Hotel. No? Is that <laughs> the name of the hotel that they have to get? I'm Is it? quite certain that's what they said. I don't think they said Fuckeye. I feel like I would have remembered if they'd said Fuckeye Hotel, but uh, one, I they said Buckeye. I'm quite certain I heard Fuckeye Hotel. <laughs> And maybe it's because the uh, sound editor was just like, fuck you guys. I'm going to pull these things in and out. It's going to sound like fuck I hotel, like I did at the beginning. I don't know. But yeah, the t I didn't know that they were in Ohio at this point. But yes, it's the Buckeye Hotel. I'm oh, OK. Yeah, they're, yeah. Though that they're in Ohio. But just in case Heath is right, we are going to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we also learned that Faye has lost that pumpkin pie bake off three years in a row to Lydia now. And then she leaves and trips over her abandoned landmine. I, I was like, I, I just wrote off camera. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We don't even because get to watch the old lady fall down. Pratt falls are great audio. So. <laughs> <laughs> just Chevy Chase audio only for his whole career. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. All right. So that night, Faye's recovering from her fall oh, and Casey comes by to check on her. Right. So we have uh, the Casey and dad scene where dad explains that now that mom has to be off her feet for six weeks, she's going to need Casey to step in and do the baking at the big pumpkin pie bake off. <laughs> what? They couldn't think of an injury that would affect baking. <laughs> yeah, right. They were just like ankle. You can't bake on that ankle. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever injure your hands or something? I don't know. This movie will never be aware of the limitations of physicality. It will be somewhere between people with a broken ankle are bedridden for a year and you're fine. Walk it off. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but it depends on the scene. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, scene to scene. Exactly, right. So Casey realizes she's going to have to do the baking this time, but mom doesn't think Casey is ready for the big bake of God damn it. I went to college, y'all. <laughs> At Morton. 4.0 at Wharton. Wharton. You no, know, just fucking relax. That's a business school. If you don't get a 4.0 at business school, you're doing something super dumb. Again, <laughs> Trump's alma mater. Yeah. Also, so it's Penn is the Ringo star of the Ivy League. <laughs> Wharton is like the Pete best of that. I don't know. <laughs> Wharton is is Ringo creating a YouTube video to tell people to stop sending him fail mail. Yeah. <laughs> Wharton is Ringo's solo project of Penn, yeah. <laughs> and this is where we need to get to, the, like, one of the major problems of this movie, which is her whole, like, I don't know how to bake thing. And look, there is definitely a difference between great bakers and good bakers. But if you're a bad baker, you lack basic human skill. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just a list of things you're supposed to do. In an order, right? That's bake. I mean, like, I'm not I'm not saying I'd be an expert at this. And I'm sure real bakers are way better than me. But really, a pumpkin pie? <laughs> yes, thing, exactly. I can make it. Yep. And to prove that point, it's a little bit later in the movie. She will later look at a 14-step recipe and be like, 14 steps? And we at home are supposed to be like, who could even do something with double digits? That's fucking impossible. <laughs> <laughs> what hellscape would I live in where double digit skill tests were involved? <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's the thing is this movie can't admit any of that. So we have the whole like, you know, the scene with mom where she's like, but can you snatch this nutmeg from my hand? Right. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Wharton only went up to nine. We only did nine <laughs> things at a time of Wharton. I don't know what's happening. Right. And mom's whole thing here is like, oh, if you don't win this bake off, our business will close and I'll have to start camming. But like. You've lost three years in a row, mom. Yeah. And your business is still. There. Oh, so the fourth year is the one that's going to deliver the fatal punch. Maybe you suck at baking and that's why she didn't want to start a bakery with you. No one ever says it. But all the evidence throughout this entire film is that this character's mother is a bad baker and should not bake. <laughs> and this this little town they live in. Vanilla Plains, Ohio is insane, apparently. 
the town is dedicated to nothing but the outcome of Bake Off. Yes. That's the entire <laughs> thing that this town does. They have like this radical group of pumpkin pie fanatics and pumpkin pie tourism <laughs> of the world comes to Vanilla Plains, Ohio. So that is the stakes, but they're huge. These are huge. Also, I would definitely go to that mom's cam thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. We learned a lot about everyone. Just yeah. You didn't find that mom super like wholesome, attractive. She had that like round baker from Ohio face. She was like Angela mm. Lansbury back in the 90s. Yes. Thank you. Angela Pillsbury. Nope. Was not setting you up in a positive way. <laughs> oh. All right, so now we're going to go check in with uh, Lydia's Bakery. I write in my notes at this point, this is the white jelly bean of movies, right? Well, and to establish that we're not going to get fucking wild in this, uh, her son is showing his mac and cheese to which someone is saying, dude, your mom will fucking kill you. Are you crazy? Mac and cheese? Yeah, but the <laughs> son dreams of baking mac and cheese instead of just pies. That's pivotal. That's the fucking plot. And the mom is like virulently anti this idea. Yeah. She comes in. She's like, fuck your savory slur word. We bake sweet items only. <laughs> sweet <laughs> only. And he goes like, but mom, we could have a full service restaurant. And I'm like, you have a bakery, right? Like you could have it. You could have a water treatment center, but that's a totally <laughs> different kind of fucking business. You, like I'm you with have mom a bookstore. What do you, yeah, just go fucking wild, man. <laughs> Why? Come on, mom. What do you always say? What's the thing you always say? Create something unique you can for yourself. Create something unique for yourself. That's what you always say. So, you know. Uh, actually, as, as I said it out loud just now, is my catchphrase that we just established literally nonsense <laughs> it is nonsense yep. oh okay yeah okay just check you say it a lot <laughs> well you know what i say create something unique create for something yourself. unique for yourself yeah, exactly. yeah. uh-huh uh, <laughs> also to keep with the overeducated for the job theme he also studied at the cordon bleu in london to learn to bake his <laughs> mac and cheese yep <laughs> where are you going to work i'm gonna be at the french laundry where are you going to work Oh, I was going to go to uh, Madison. Oh, okay. Where are you going to go? I'm going to Vanilla Bean Hills, Ohio to <laughs> assist at my mom's bakery. Yes, I don't want to run be the it. Head I'm just, baker there. I'll be oh. vice baker and hope someday to inherit the business. <laughs> Learn this mac and cheese here at the Cordon Bleu. And his exact words, he goes, I didn't study, Mom, at the Cordon Bleu in London. And I was like, end your sentence right there. You did not study <laughs> you at didn't. Cordon Bleu. No, you didn't. Uh, you didn't. Nope. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, Casey is Googling baking pies for dummies. This is where we learn that it has 14 steps. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And uh, pro tip, do not Google anything and then amateurs. Unless you want to. Yeah, porn. good. Just good, throwing that out there. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Oh, my algorithm was way different than hers. The stuff <laughs> that she popped up when she searched for that. Yeah. Yep. Different. <laughs> I got some good stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we cut to Lydia finding out that Faye is out of the baking competition. And Lydia decides that she, you know, because she can't go up against this girl's daughter, she's going to enter her son who went to the court on blue. In London, in the county pumpkin pie bake off to keep it fair. <laughs> who will win? The person who can't bake or the person who went to one of the best cooking schools in the world? What stakes we have established. Yeah. <sighs> it's a lot like Creed 2 with the family <laughs> feud. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, so the and, and uh, Sam, the, the son, the character in the goddamn movie seems to be aware of what a dull and unimportant thing we've themed it around. Right. Because he's going like, Mom, this is a pumpkin pie contest. It would be impossible to stay interested in that for an hour and 34 minutes, even on YouTube, when you can just like pause and leave. And it, but <laughs> mom is like, no. This is the most important goddamn thing in this town. The paper covers it. It's it's televised. It's cataloged at the Library of Congress. It's bronzed. You know, <laughs> like it, it, apparently, yeah, like this is this town lives and dies by this fucking pumpkin pie bake off. We could get on pie heaven, motherfucker. <laughs> pie heaven, the local cable TV show with Guy Fieri. How dare you? Pie heaven. 
<laughs> I, I mean, it's not Guy Fieri. It's his brother. But his, it's, but it's not. Guy is on the no. Christmas episode every year, and that airs no. right after ours. So if people get hooked on Pie TV, and then they, they go back through the free dude, and available dude fears, episode. It's similar. So... <laughs> Yeah, but so, but Sam agrees he'll do the pumpkin pie bake off if his mom will consider his not being a bakery anymore business plan. Those are the stakes. Are the stakes of this yeah. movie? <laughs> Get ready for us to add that an awful lot. Okay, I like how he used the uh, "it's important to me" thing right back in her face, though, because mm -hmm. she was like, "Well, it's important to me that we run this bakery the way I want to, and we're not doing your thing." And he's like, "Oh, we're playing with it's important to me as an argument. Cool." Uh, it's important to me, the opposite of what you said. Great. Yeah, right, right. Now we're both equal important. Cancel. So cancels? You never use that anymore? Dumb argument? Zero Great. Out. Let's do what I said. <laughs> Went to the court on blue. All right. So now we cut to the fair where we've got like uh, this cross cut of the moms telling their offspring how tough and high stakes this pie contest is going to be. Right. Yep. And they run into each other and they have a little <laughs> banter. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's so good. The two of them are walking through the grocery store, like the two pairs of feuding families. And one feuding mom is telling the daughter, like, all right, this isn't a game. You stab that bastard if you have to. You stab <laughs> him. And the other one's like, you stab that bitch if you have yeah. to. You stab her <laughs> in the face, in the eye. And then they bump into each other, the two moms in the aisle. And they're like, oh, hello. Like Newman. Yeah. And they stare right, at each other. Right, and uh... like, oh, hello, whore. <laughs> hello, whore. I was just telling my daughter to stab your son in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> What aisle do they have the whore bags? I'm assuming you know. Were you just there? <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, we watch people register for a baking contest, man. Oh, uh, but we meet my favorite character of the movie. <laughs> Desperately <laughs> suicidal H.P. Lovecraftian pie host. <laughs> Hi, everybody. You know this shit. It's a fucking baking contest. I am so tired. Please. Free me from my torment. <laughs> oh, okay. And he ends with this amazing thing. He goes, remember, the best thing to put in a pumpkin pie. And then everyone answers, is your tea. <laughs> what that means is bite a pumpkin yeah, pie. Right, but yeah. I did not get that for <laughs> way too long. And I was like, hell yeah, Hallmark. Let's get into this Hellmar channel. Like tentacles yeah. start appearing out of the pies. The sun turns black with blood. <laughs> also, what this means is this entire town has been to this pumpkin pie contest weigh-in event. That's yes, not even yes. part of the contest. The preliminaries. Yes. The preliminary weigh-in. They've been to this like 20 years in a row, and they know the catchphrase yes. lines from the announcer guy. Oh, yeah. they're like, teeth! Woo! Gets me every time. Yeah, they all go down to Florida. They watch training camp. It's a good time yeah, to start right. a yearly yeah. camp. <laughs> oh, and this is, of that. course, where Casey realizes that she has to take on famed chef Sam. So they, they have their little back and forth in advance of the bake-off. Right. And, and there's this fucking... Weird moment there where she's like, wait, mom, isn't he a baker? And she's like, you can take him. And she's like, no, he's a baker and I'm an accountant. And she's like, it's a Hallmark movie. Just fucking go with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, you just need a montage or two. We're going to Romeo and Juliet this thing. You're going to see what happens, yeah. mom. You see what happens? Mm -hmm. Did you read that? Remember what happens? Also, I have a question. Do you have to wear the entire Land's End catalog in order to be in a Hallmark movie? Yeah, or is it just an option? Okay, sure yeah. Do. You got to make it through the whole thing? Sure do. Yeah. You're going to need to showcase five or ten items minimum. <laughs> Absolutely. I actually found it delightful. I wanted to buy several of the things that he was showcasing. So, yeah. So, they shit talk for a little while. like Because basically, she says to her mom, like, yeah, he's a baker. I'm an accountant. Then he shows up and says, but I'm a baker and you're an accountant. And she's like, oh, Right, good point. Good right, point. but she's like, actually, in Wharton Business School, where I went, ranked first in the... Here, I'll just hand you the rankings. You can see where it's listed. <laughs> I've highlighted Wharton. Uh, we learned to think outside the box. So I'm going to think outside the box. And I wanted her so badly to make a postmodern pumpkin it's pie. It's a deconstruction of a pumpkin pie. <laughs> it's just a, it's a butternut squash that she's urinated on. And Dean Coons paid her $11 million to make it. 
These are the tears of an orphan who was given a pumpkin pie and then we took it away. <laughs> Here are the tears. Just a walnut shell full of raw sugar, bitch. Beat those ideas. <laughs> Throw the sugar in your eye. There you go. <laughs> My pumpkin pie was highlighted in the New Yorker. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody got the joke. It's cool. <laughs> All right. And then we see Casey mixing batter wrong. She doesn't know how to do this at all. Yeah. And also, like, the mom comes in. She's like, you're doing that all wrong. And I wanted her to be like, cool. So do you want to, like, teach me or should we do baking by process of elimination? Yeah. Like, how are we? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So yeah, but 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 her but her response is insane. It's like, "Mom, go home. I will intuit how to mix batter." No, she can sit there and tell you what to do. Then we go to her, her buying pumpkins and she doesn't even know what a baking pumpkin is. <laughs> is. Is that really a thing that like only certain pumpkins can be baked? I feel like I could bake any pumpkin I I'm want. pretty sure no. you can, but there's going to be a difference in how they're going to yeah, taste. The smaller pumpkins are baking pumpkins. They're much sweeter. The flesh is much sweeter. And then there's carbon pumpkins, which are bigger. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Weird. I'm going to assume they got most of the baking shit right Eli here. Knows that. <laughs> I may have enjoyed this movie more than I'm letting on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a hint of like outrage that you were like, yeah, well, there are well, different there differences are. between those two. There's larger and we don't smaller ones and they have different Disseminate flavors. false information here on our comedy <laughs> podcast. We can have a good time. We can all have a good time without lying about fucking pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> Name is <laughs> <laughs> Did you make this movie? Yeah, Did you secretly right, write this right, for yeah. Hallmark? Oh, look, here's yeah, what I will does. say. Hallmark is a channel dedicated to sad white girls and I am in my core, at my heart, a sad white girl. <laughs> There's a pumpkin spice latte next to Eli yep. right now. I guarantee yep. fucking tears. There's literally, literally an empty peppermint mocha cup <laughs> directly next to my computer. So at the beginning of this, there was. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. But then Sam shows up while she's trying to figure out what a baking pumpkin is. And they talk shit. And I love this shit talk so much because they were going for a, a poker analogy at a certain point. Right. And it does not work out well. <laughs> she says, you might as well fold now. And he turns to her and he goes, I never fold. Like, that's. Yeah. I want. Oh, that's dumb. I want to play you in poker. Then. <laughs> yeah, that's super duper dumb. Yeah, what? Well, and then they have a moment of, I think it's, is it accidental sexual tension? Because she's like, my talents lie elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, that's a dick sucking thing right you mean dick sucking and she's like no i mean accounting and he's like oh cool never describe that as talents lying elsewhere just so you know <laughs> <Because> people will <laughs> assume you that's mean. been that phrase is reserved for dick sucking from <laughs> now on <laughs> all right so now we got uh Faye and casey they're strategizing about the big hotel account when suddenly casey out of nowhere is just like i can't believe that sam doesn't respect my baking skills right Right, to which her mom responds, look at me, look at me, do not fuck him. <laughs> I didn't fuck him. What? Just don't. I already fucked him. Ah! <laughs> right, and this is where she reveals that she took psychological warfare classes at Wharton. Oh my God, what the hell was this scene all about? <laughs> Don't worry, Mom. I want to go to that class so bad. I know how to get inside the enemy's head. I went to Wharton's psychological warfare classes. It was right after sliding pieces of paper back and forth across the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I love, too, that they're using Wharton. Like, I mean, you can't do that anymore. You can't just use Wharton as the I'm a smart. Like, she might as well just go like, Mom, I have a business degree from Wharton. Do you think I could get that and still not be smart enough to let my underlings handle the Ukraine bribe without blurting it out on a phone call with a couple dozen career diplomats listening in? Like, it doesn't. You can't. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Like, once you know Andrew, that whole I went to Harvard thing, just, you know, so. so yep, did Andrew. Exactly. Me and Jeffrey Epstein ruined NYU. Yeah, I get exactly. it. What I'm saying is there's when every college has bad apples. We're in the stern school of nope. That's Jeff Epstein and Eli. Oh, rough. <laughs> Yale. Mm, no. so, Geraldo. All right. So now Casey is practicing making pumpkin bread. 
Yep. It's not very good. Not not like a full making pumpkin bread competitively practicing. Just everybody calm down. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, no. It's dialed down to three. Yeah, exactly. The preliminary for the pie baking contest is a pumpkin bread. Yeah. Which I am unfortunate <laughs> enough to have thought about and be like, wait, that makes no fucking sense because it's a pie baking contest. Right, yes. <laughs> One would think the preliminary would be a pumpkin pie. <laughs> so... The preliminary, you just bring a pumpkin, yeah. show it to us, you grow one. Uh, and round two is a fencing competition, and then round three is a pumpkin pie contest. We lose a really, a lot of good bakers who can't fence, let me tell you. <laughs> I went to the Cordon Bleu and fencing yeah, school right. at Princeton so. School of Fencing. 4.0. And meanwhile, okay, so like, and she's such a bad baker, of course, that she's burning something. Sam happens to walk by and see smoke, and he's the male lead. He's the love interest, so he rushes in to save her, doesn't even think about his own safety. Right, and there's this great moment as this character runs in, and there's like a faint mist of smoke above them, and she's like, what are you doing, man? And he was like, I was gonna lift a flaming beam off me. <laughs> Did you did you bring that baby in with you to add to it to make it a better hero thing? No. Is that a puppy no. behind your back? No. <laughs> or you hold this baby and puppy? What? I'm gonna carry you. <laughs> so yeah, so they have a chat, and uh, this is where like you know they, we can start to get their love interest to blossom. This is where he like opens up and tells her about the restaurant he wo wants to open. And he describes it, and it's a Denny's, right? Like, when he's describing it, everything that he says fits in perfectly with a Denny's. Oh. It's not even a Denny's, though. Denny's is, like, a click or two above this in terms of, like, the level of casual restaurant. Yeah. He's describing a counter that they already have, and he's like, you know what I was thinking of doing? This is my life dream. You know, I went to the Cordon Bleu. Uh, I was going to put a table also. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? Because you know what people love? Communal tables. That's his big dream is communal tables. Because oh who doesn't like God. being sit next to total strangers and going, oh, good. I hope you don't have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fuck community tables. Gross. And also family style service. And the I was worst. like, yeah, let's all share the food. We'll order a little <laughs> bit of everything. We'll all share. It'll all work out great. And Heath will get the amount of exactly what he wants that he wants. It always goes well. <laughs> Yeah, we'll split these fucking fries. Yes. But again, you have to remember that communal tables and family style, this is the white girl dream yes. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and there's seven women's rooms and only one men's room. I don't know why I'm going to dedicate so much space, but yeah, seven <laughs> women's rooms. So no one ever has to wait. So, <laughs> And he's going like, you know, I have all these plans, but... Boy, if only I had someone with a business degree from Wharton to help me with my business plans, then, you know, there could be some kind of a quid pro quo that could really jumpstart this plot. <laughs> well, let me tell you what I learned at Wharton. In fact, this is the most important thing I learned at Wharton. It's the difference between an idea and a plan. Which is? Uh, as they're both four letter words. <laughs> yeah, she says, Hold on, I don't remember. That, that's the most important thing you learned at this <laughs> Ivy League education you got? The difference between those two words? Also, I wasn't really paying a lot of attention during this scene because in the background of this scene, I don't know if you guys saw this in my notes, there's a lady in the window who looks at the camera and waves. Oh, no, I did not <laughs> notice her. It's Pretty great. <laughs> you guys doing the pumpkin pie? Oh, no. This is the movie. This is the movie. All right. The oh. real one's tomorrow. The real one's tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Come back. Cool. Sorry. All right. So, but then they uh, ultimately, though, they hatch a plan where Casey is going to help Sam with his business proposal and Sam is going to teach Casey how to bake in advance of the big bake off. Yeah. Yep. Are the stakes of Are this the stakes movie? of this movie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wharton plus Cordon Blue equals take over the yeah, world. They're exactly. Gonna Oh, it's, uh, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. All right. So now we cut to them plotting their surreptitious baking lessons over the phone. This is also where we meet Casey's big sister, the high powered attorney. Hello. You are my sister. You are a lawyer. Yes. Hello. I am your sister and I am a lawyer. <laughs> Excellent. This is Betty. She will matter later. later. 
Can you name a law school? I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> we used up our Wharton. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Also, I just want to say, as they introduce Betty, Betty's like, you know, now that neither of you are entering, maybe I... And they're like, shut the fuck up, Betty, you <laughs> mediocre shrew. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I wanted Betty to just deliver the I wish it was like when we were in elementary school from Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> but so another thing, big thing that we learn here in this scene is that, you know, the Faye and Lydia baking feud has torn this goddamn town apart. Right. Like everyone in this city is invested in their bakery feud. Mm -hmm. Also, this is the first but not last time that Casey makes reference to that job offer she had at that big company in New York <laughs> Incorporated. Oh, God, it's so dark and sad. Just like, yeah, could have worked at Quiznos. Maybe you've heard of it. They were the first to toast a sandwich. <laughs> Because I went to Wharton. Because I, I went to Wharton. Pennsylvania. It's traded on the Pennsylvania Stock Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> my business degree, it was going to mean I was going to be cashier right away. Didn't even have to work my way up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't because that's my backstory. All right. So now Sam is going to teach her to bake after dark. And the cut here. To, to oh, this God. Scene was <laughs> So aggressive. Oh. Like I thought the movie the movie almost tipped over on this cut. <laughs> the movie almost <laughs> tripped and fell. And he's gonna get her to relate to baking by telling her that cooking is like an equation. You follow the follow steps. The steps like an equation. Love the equation. Um, <laughs> that's that's not what equation means. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, I, I figured you would have learned at Wharton what equation means before idea and plan as a distinction. No, equation is not a sequential list. <laughs> no. In any sense. <laughs> to which she responds, well, easy for you to say, you were the star quarterback and now you're a baker. You know that old story. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he, he does that stupid... I became a chef because sometimes all you need is a plate of cookies. And I wrote in my notes, almost never, That's almost never, much. all I need has been a plate of cookies. I could use a plate of cookies. <laughs> yeah, but it's not what you need. It's, nope. <laughs> it's not all you need. Oh, I'd be pretty good. Okay. Yeah, no, he would probably go longer on most than just a plate of cookies. <laughs> yeah, and also I wrote in my notes here at, at, at one point, Sam, you're mixing your batter such that the bread will be lumpy are the stakes of this movie. I have like, I, like it's like basically just a suffix in my notes at this point. But yeah, no, he, but at this point he has to do the mansplainy romantic reach down her arm and show her exactly how to spoon that fucking dough out, you know, kind of thing. And look, I know this is a movie trope, but just once in all of cinema, I want one woman who has this done to her to go, oh, move my arm in a circle. I didn't know until you hugged me from behind. <laughs> See, I wanted to, like this. I wanted this to go the other way too. like late, like because the next day we're going to have her helping him with his business plan. And I wanted her to be doing that while he's entering shit into Excel. No, you press the space bar like this. <laughs> summation <laughs> summation Summa okay okay I got it no I got it I got it I, 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 I pressed it let I me show it. you how to wrap the text <laughs> Don't. I mean okay I do need to know how to wrap the text because you say it regularly data filters <laughs> yeah so I guess now that the seeds of their love have been planted we'll let them germinate over a quick break and when we come back we'll dive into even more Pumpkin Pie Wars. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wharton College School of Business, Psychological Warfare 101. Uh, first of all, uh, everybody sitting in the back, you've all failed. What? That's not fair. Well, okay, you two. That was actually a test for fighting back. You two get an A. Good work. We do? Awesome. Pocket sand. Ow! Oh, ow. My eyes! Wharton, bitches! Part of the Ivy League, technically. <laughs> technically. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open on the day of the big meeting with the hotel. 
but we're not going to get to that quite yet. We're going to build the suspense on that a little bit longer. First, Casey has to stop off and see her dad for a, a little pep talk. Uh, yes, I'm off to play golf, not to have gay sex. Just in case you're wondering, that's <laughs> what I am doing. Something about scones? Is that what you're doing? These are golfing scones. I'm not going to fuck this scone <laughs> or this scone. What? And then after spending, I don't know, 30, 40% of the movie up to this point, setting up this big meeting, we cut to her walking out of it. Yep. Which means that they, tr <laughs> in my imagination, it means that they tried and failed to write an actual business pitch scene and then they just gave up <laughs> well they didn't have a degree from wharton you see yeah where's that cutting room floor where she's just like hello so you'll notice we have crackers <laughs> and bread you guys know ideas mm -hmm. <laughs> you and know plans, plans? <laughs> no i'm done i'm done i'm yep, done, that was it. I'm done. Was please bread. hire us for your Buckeye Hotel. <laughs> she just throws a pumpkin at their face and runs out the door. But yeah, so now that we've fast forwarded through all of that, we cut to the next surreptitious meeting between Casey and Sam. But damn it, if her sister doesn't show up just before Sam's going to be there. Oh, no. And like they tried to have that moment, right? They try to have that like comedic. Oh, he's showing up right when she's there. But how it plays out is Sam notices her and then just walks away until she's left. And she turns yep. to her sister and goes, was that Sam? And her sister goes, I don't know. And the scene ends. And the scene, this movie will set up all the stakes of other movies and then be like, whoa, 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 whoa. That dial is dangerously close to a two, guys. Yeah. <laughs> How about instead she just says no, and then it's all fine. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> they just find a local college freshman who's gone through a breakup. Okay, what if... The sister walks into the... Oh, she's crying. She's crying. Okay, the sister can't walk all the way into the bakery. There you go. Look at all the fall hats. Huh? You like those fall hats? You're the saddest you'll ever be. So... You want a car coat from L.L. Bean? I do want a car coat. All right, so now... My coats... I feel stupid when I go in the car with my current coat. It's like totally unthemed. You want to post a picture of an Instagram on sunset? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now they're going to work on the business plan together. And they're going to have the, you know, if I can only meet the right guy, if I can only meet the right gal conversation. Tiny note. When he comes back in, she's like, oh, sorry about that. And he goes, that's OK. I had to catch up on my window shopping. I am 100 percent sure whoever wrote that line does not know what that means. Yeah, he thinks it means buying windows. Absolutely. Yeah. No question. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and this is where she goes over the business plan, which turns out to be an Excel spreadsheet budget. Yep. That's it. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, I have listed almost a dozen items on the budget. <laughs> business plan achieved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and by the way, in case you're just wondering how cliche this fucking movie is, at a certain point in this scene, she falls off a goddamn ladder and he catches her. But they don't do it right. No. no. Okay. <laughs> they don't even do the like all he the way just... fall. She like stumbles slightly and he double cups her ass and they're like, there, good, yeah. we did it. <laughs> and th this is where I had this insane moment where I was like, the Hallmark Channel does incredibly well, right? Is this what women want? Because the numbers say that this and Twilight <laughs> and Fifty Shades of Grey and The Hunger Games is what women want. And I don't know where those Venn diagrams intersect. <laughs> the Hallmark version, they don't even want to actually fall off the ladder. No. They just want to be like, oh, 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 no. Oh, you're good. I Okay. Right, you Should I, stumbled slightly gonna, and I hugged you. <laughs> yeah. I said, I said, oh, 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 and that's it. Should I climb up there and brush your cheek gently? <laughs> I'll climb up there. I'll climb up there. You stay. No, we're good. All right. So now we're at the fair, and it's time for the preliminary round battle pumpkin bread. Oh, shit. <laughs> and they're, so they're walking it and they're playing it up, right? Because the entire crowd, of course, is invested entirely in Lydia and Faye's bakery feud. So they're playing it up and pretending to hate each other for the crowd. Oh, I wanted one of them to take it too far and just like, you know what, Sam? <laughs> You're a rapist. What? <laughs> I mean, 
You girl. fucked a child in Thailand. <laughs> what? That you, that you hunted. <laughs> well, she you're told me that. I I said you're a real meanie. <laughs> Me. So that, wait, what? <laughs> So now the entire sad ass town has gathered to watch people bake, bake bread. And this is where we learned that this is just the 10 a.m. group. Yep. There's a multi class. <laughs> there's a fucking chart with stat. There's a there winner are, take all. There's this wild card seed. Yeah. No, there, yeah. there are 12 competitors. So there are four hour long rounds of people baking bread that this audience is going to sit through in <laughs> silence. Oh, I love and it. I want to see the tournament seating meeting to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, right. Because they, they really had to engineer that, too. Like, they're, they're there being like, no, 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 no. Uh, we are the two of us mortal enemies. Uh, we need to meet in the finals, but also be in every round together. Yeah. Does that make mm -hmm. sense for a tournament? Yeah. <laughs> Great. And we, we meet suicidal judge here again for a brief moment. He's like, all right, everybody. More baking. Uh, masturbated to my daughter's class photo this morning just to feel evil because evil is something. <laughs> Nothing? All right, pumpkin bread. I'll see you guys in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have another one of these the music has been removed montages. Oh my, yes, I need so much. It's just the s deafening silence except for the cracking of eggs yes. and the dead faces of the judges. <laughs> This belongs in the fucking MoMA. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack of this movie and Robert Maplethorpe just as a yeah. montage. Yep. Also, we get commentary here. He's like, she's making pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread. Also pumpkin bread. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Gail. Sorry your husband died in that motorcycle accident. <laughs> and there's, there's a moment at the end of each of these rounds where each contestant has to name the thing they made. And they each have to, they try to name it differently. But this round, they're just like, pumpkin bread. I also made pumpkin, well, pumpkin they start bread. Like, in order to differentiate it, they started explaining it by temperature. My pumpkin bread has been cooled. My pumpkin bread is warm. And the audience doesn't give a shit. They are cheering wildly for the pumpkin bread. Oh, I knew one of them was going to go for ice cold pumpkin bread this year. I told you, Jeff. I fucking told you <laughs> at Fantasy Pumpkin Pie Contest <laughs> last year. How does the first one make pumpkin bread that doesn't cool? How would you do that? That's crazy. <laughs> Uncooled? So it's amazing. All right. So we've got the, you know, Sam and Casey chatting post bakery or post baking. Uh, we get Faye and Lydia running into each other again. Oh, that's always going to be rough. Like this, it, it literally like Lydia goes to punch the old lady on the crutches at one point and has to be held back <laughs> in this scene. Yep. And I just want to say that if they had <laughs> just had a full on fist fight this would be my favorite movie <laughs> <laughs> okay and then we cut i i don't even fucking know we cut to sam and casey having a romantic picnic in a median before they announce the winners <laughs> oh my god is this in, romance romance in the middle of the briar patch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that this guy hollowed out a clearing yeah. to have a secret Kettle corn date? Yes, exactly. Is that a thing? Kettle corn picnics? Well, when you're at a fair, you make and you're yeah. when you are aiming for white women, kettle corn date is the fucking Mad Libs that hits the gold. Well, especially if you add picnic. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like they just throw darts at white girl words, right? They're <laughs> like, all right, let's see, pumpkin spice sweaters. That's what they do in this next scene. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I like that stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm wearing a sweater right now. <laughs> you are. All right. So the judges are about to announce the finalists, though. So they run out and learn of their fate. Now, the first finalist is Sam. Hooray. The next finalist is Betty, because she's the only other character that we know in the movie other than Sam and she's Casey that's in it. In the movie. Yep. And the final finalist, I know there were only two last time, but there are three this time for some reason, is Casey, of course, because otherwise there wouldn't be a movie. Here. Right. And let's just throw this out there that if the quote unquote turn of this movie doesn't happen, 
the end of this movie is just Betty in the center of these two in a pumpkin pie feud being like, oh, I feel like there's not a lot of stakes um, if I don't participate. <laughs> I feel like this is your thing and I'm the third one out. <laughs> whoa, whoa, who's Team Betty? Anybody? Huh? <laughs> no? No one cares about Betty? All right. Well... Well, see, and at this point, I was thinking, like, I'm writing in my notes, like, oh, wow, what a crazy twist it'll be when Betty wins it all and they realize that their feud was, was you know, counterproductive or whatever. But no, this movie <laughs> is just going to dig in on the fuck Betty thing, right? Yeah, it would have been great if they lost to Betty and the whole feud the whole time was like, who's the second worst and worst bakery? In <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so... But now, like, people uh, at the fair are seeing them not be enemies. So that's, you know, that's dangerous. They might blow oh. their co cover. They also compare their stakes for a moment. She's like, he's like, yeah, I mean, if I don't win, my mom might not consider my business plan. And she's like, okay, well, if I don't win, my business goes out of business. So, hey, can I win? We're friends. Yeah, can right, I win? right. Yeah, it seems like a no brainer here. I'll suck your dick if you let me win. How about that? How about you let me win and I suck your dick? Everybody wins. Huh? Hallmark Channel. <laughs> and let's be clear, if that had been how this movie ended, it would be my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah, right. And I would change its title legally to I'll suck your dick if you let me win. Nope. Opposite. It's the opposite yep. of whatever that is. However... The antonym of what Eli said would, would look. That's what they did. Yeah. It's so fucking boring. It's so boring. I honestly. So they, this is a TV movie. This was on the Hallmark Channel like three years ago during their autumn harvest thing festival tactical sure. lineup. Yeah. Whatever. And the cuts between scenes, a bunch of them are very clearly like, oh, we're about to cut to a commercial. Right. And I actually spent a bunch of time being like, oh. I wonder what the commercials from 2016 would have been. And I looked up commercials because it was more fun than watching this movie. Sure, sure. By the way, the antonym of uh, I'll suck your dick if you let me win is you have to eat my ass if you lose. Just for those yeah, wondering. No, it is. It is. <laughs> um, he, he, Eli looked it up as he was, uh, was finishing up with his. You should look up the difference between idea and plan. <laughs> that, that bad boy's off the dome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, and th so they ultimately decide that they need to continue with the baking lessons and the business plan lessons because there are still thirty-seven minutes left in this in this movie. Wow, really? Hallmark wanted ninety minutes from us this time, huh? <laughs> yeah, should have checked that before we wrote Act Two. To be fair, <laughs> so yeah, so Casey returns to the bakery ahead of a triumphal procession. Right? They uh, they they cheer her as she the finalist in the pumpkin pie contest comes back. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, people have seen them talking to each other, so her mom is going to try and get her to date Betty's son, Jake. Yeah, sure. But again, like all things in movies where there would be stakes, this movie's just like, oh, I'm not interested. And they're like, well, we respect that, obviously, if you don't want to go on a date <laughs> yeah, with Jake, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we could work him into the plot. And nope. Okay. No, okay. All, right. All right. Well, I wanted the camera to pan over to Jake holding flowers, just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we get a scene where Casey pops in on Dad because we have to remind you that he's part of this movie. Yeah, and and the only point of this scene is that he warns her not to go rogue on her mother's pumpkin pie. Yes. So you know how she gets. Anyways. I'm proud of you for making it to the pie finals. Hey, do you want to kill ourselves? I just heard that yeah, sentence right. I just said. <laughs> what a sad fucking life they lead. Mm -mm, no, I would like to be not. If we're going to be <laughs> pumpkin pie finals proud, let's not be instead. What do you say? Yeah. Huh? Stand behind daddy. <laughs> Save a bullet. That's the best thing to put teeth. No, bullet. Bullet. <laughs> Got it. Well, and then, okay, so once again, we have this nearly stakes but not really moment, right? Because she's supposed to be meeting with Sam again at the bakery for more of these surreptitious, illicit lessons, you know. And the mom and the sister are like, honey, you've been working so hard. We'll close up the bakery for you tonight. But he's supposed to meet her there. And she's like, oh, no. And she then she texts and she's like, can we just do this over at your place instead? And he's like, yep, sure can. There we go. And that's that's how they resolve that. 
<laughs> Something was going to go a little bit crazy, but uh, no, don't it's worry. fine. We'll don't just worry. we'll do it in a different building. There, there might have okay. been momentary shenanigans, but don't worry. This movie no, avoids them. We have squashed the tension. <laughs> You're welcome. So we cut to them making the business plan, and her five-year plan is for him to have 10% growth year to year. Every year. And she <laughs> says she describes that as conservative. <laughs> you know how local bakeries kind of... You know, it's like compound interest. Basically, yeah. you just keep making a bunch of fucking money at a local bakery year over year. Just 10% over and over and over. You Absolutely. know how bakeries profits double every 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's like plugging this into as if this would be information for a spreadsheet. He's like, oh, 10% every year and spreadsheet. I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah. This is amazing. It's crazy. Wharton. There's also this. I just wanted to say it again. So now we're trying to get like uh, some sexual tension going, right? So he starts talking about how her eyes sparkle when she talks about spreadsheets. Oh, man. You really get wet from entering formulas, don't you? I do. I do. I'm soaked right now. Okay. All right. You guys are making fun. I feel like this (laughs) is uh, some people are into. Well, that's okay because he's going to talk about what makes him wet because he's like, yeah. You have no d- idea how delicious this goat cheese egg is going to yes. be. Yes, so but what I'm saying is a lot of people were hit perfectly by this movie. <laughs> and, like spreadsheets and mac and cheese, and that's two of their favorite things that are sexual to them. Yeah. And you had your thing about pumpkins earlier. and <laughs> I don't see why we had to judge me now. <laughs> <laughs> but then her pie crust dings and breaks all the sexual tension. Oh, no, she didn't. Do the the buy crust right. And okay, so here's the moment where this movie really reveals itself to be the unfinished porn that it meant it was meant to be because he goes like, all right, well, I'll tell you what, if you can't get that pie crust right, I'll just have to stay up all night helping you with it. <laughs> and so they do. They spend a night together trying to get like we see them leaving the bakery. It's daytime now. Yep, they literally stayed up all night not fucking. Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted them to be like, "Wow, that was um boring. That was yeah, boring. I don't fucked. think that needed an all fucked. night. Yeah, should have fucked. That Several was not times. a. I feel like we could have gotten that in two or three more tries. So <laughs> the fact that we presumably took twelve hours to do this is baffling to me. Um, I feel personally attacked by this relatable content. <laughs> <laughs> he had the like. Bach line too, where he's like trying to kiss her, sort of, and he's like, sometimes exactly what you want is right in front of you, like my mac and cheese, and then he, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, so yeah, and that's some mac and cheese. <laughs> so yeah, so they they kept each other all up all night in the least entertaining way possible. Now it's morning. They walk out, and he's like, wow, I've got to get started on the morning bakery, but like. But we can tell where the sun is in relation to them. It's after 11 a.m., right? Yeah. Oh, man, those first customers who drop by at 2.30 in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, right. They're going to want start. their donuts. <laughs> this is where they run into their dads. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Who are definitely not fucking. No, they were not gay fucking <laughs> just now. Oh, uh, yeah. No, we've been uh, secret golf partners. Golf buddies is what I was comparing. Right. Golf partners, just like he said. Yeah, we're not Let me fucking. tell you. Two people meeting bright and early in the morning in secret. We are <laughs> golfing. <laughs> Why don't you have any golf clubs? Because that's a great question. They are at fucking what? They're fucking each other. That's right. The golf clubs are gay <laughs> and afraid to talk about it because we're part of a different generation. <laughs> and sometimes the golf clubs just say, let's run away. Right. Let's let's go to a part of the world where no one knows us and live our truth. But then. Max over Max's golf clubs are like, no, the kids aren't out of college yet. (laughs) Anyways, we won't tell your secret if you don't tell ours. I love that because I wanted so bad after he said that for dad to just like cut his palm with a knife and hold it out to him or something. But he doesn't. They just, yeah, they agree to keep each other's secrets. No one will tell anyone who anyone's fucking. Okay, so now we're back at Faye's Bakery and she's getting pretty antsy about the big hotel account right what with them on the verge of going out of business yep thinking maybe there's too damn many bakeries in this town already you know Mm -hmm. invisible hand taking care of something here but no 
this is the I have to win. I don't want to be a baker forever fight. And I wanted her so badly to be like, I don't want your pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then there's this bizarre moment. Who the hell even knows why this would happen in the movie where like the mom's like, well, you know, my ankle's feeling much better. I can probably help you on your pie. And Casey is like, no, I need to do this on my own. Damn it. If you help me with my pie recipe, I quit. It's like, well, that, that escalated. I don't know why. Uh -huh. Well, don't worry. If there were stakes, they are gone now. Because yeah. my answer is fine. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so now she's closing up her bakery at 4 p.m. this time when Sam happens by. Hey, did you get my texts? No. Anyone who says that is lying. Just throwing that out there. Anyone who no, ever says they didn't get your texts is lying or was in the mountains. Were they in the <laughs> mountains? No. Then they are lying. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes people, I don't look at my phone every hour of every waking moment of my day. I sometimes have it in a different, I don't always look at my phone. That's, That's right. Crazy. That's right. Sometimes people intentionally haven't seen your texts. Yeah. Um, Sometimes but, people avoid their phone. <laughs> yeah. On the off because chance it's a pain they in the see ass a text. It's distracting to be constantly getting noises from your phone, whether it's texts or other stuff, alerts. All right. All right. <sighs> but Heath, how do you know where to get a deal on CBD gummies <laughs> if you don't <laughs> check every text? All right. But yeah, so um, <laughs> Sam has a big lead on his, in, on his restaurant dream, but Casey's too upset about it. The argument, I guess, that she had with her mom to celebrate with him properly. So he takes her to dinner, right? Oh, hey, I would love to hear about your fight with your mother over dinner because I am a fictional man in a Hallmark movie. So, yeah, <laughs> tell me what she said. Tell me what you said. Let me react to every exchange. Yes, I am written down. <laughs> well, and also, as is she, because he's like, I've decided to take you to a nice romantic dinner at the gazebo at the fair that's closed overnight. <laughs> and she's like, well, you know what? I'm a written down Hallmark character, so I'm OK with that. Yum. Right. Eating outside in the fall. I'm not cold. <laughs> in Ohio, no less. <laughs> Let's each put on our gazebo coats from LLB <laughs> and head out together. That sounds delightful. Look at these moccasins that I got. They have rubber on the bottom. They're perfect for long walks to the gazebo or the pile of wood for the fire. <laughs> Delightful. You can walk away from the gazebo. There's so many uses. <laughs> and what did they like stop and pick up Chick-fil-A on the way? Like there's not food there. They weren't being served. No, some someone from Crafty like sliced up an apple and put it in front of them and they were like, yummy dinner, yummy. Yeah, yum. right. <laughs> Eating like plastic toy food like you do at your niece's fucking tea party or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they have this amazing moment where he's like, I have a suggestion. And I was like, if this if this guy's just like, let's fuck, I will <laughs> forgive this movie. But no, he wants them to keep being friends, friends, friendship. Yeah, he's like, I, if there was any zone I was aiming for, really, yeah. And then, you know, they have their whole, like, boy, neither of us are very happy in our lives. We shouldn't be doing this for a living. And then he goes like, well, you have to admit, you're the female lead. I'm the male lead. This is the Hallmark Channel. We should probably kiss. It's pretty much the end of Act Two, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he is a beautiful man. She's a beautiful yeah. woman. Yeah. I want to buy, like, MLM shampoo from this right? guy. Yeah. He's so... Mm -hmm. Nice. It was, it was like just nice. Yeah, right. He's the kind. He's the guy that your grandma very clearly wants to fuck, but you're okay with that, yeah, right? Because you, sure. you just you it, want grandma. it for grandma. Yeah. Yeah. No, this was I would say the least awkward kiss in Gam history, possibly by the couple I would most like to actually watch fuck in Gam history. Yeah, and I'm telling you that the Hallmark Pornhub crossover is an untapped marketplace think about it you have porn stars make a hallmark movie oh. 19 dollars and 99 cents later you get to watch all those characters fuck i am in oh all right all right no i yeah. like your idea though this That's is what good I'm saying. shit oh yeah they they go they go into some porn here though not uh, not visual porn but talking the porn of the hallmark channel viewer that at one point he actually says you have definitely proven your worth to your mother. And then looks at the camera. Viewer of the Hallmark Channel. Yes, you have. 
<laughs> masturbate to that. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We have some business plans to drop. Don't worry. We got it. We know a guy who went to Wharton. So we're going to take a quick break. But let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will they be able to bake pumpkin pies well enough? Will they be able to mix the ingredients thoroughly enough to not make it lumpy? Can Noah come up with a third question on this shoestring of a plot in time? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the delectable conclusion of Pumpkin Pie Wars. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the 427th ever Pumpkin Pie Bake Off. I'm your host, Chet Markley, reminding you that I have named whoever kills me in my will as my sole benefactor. Nobody. No takers. Fine. Well, it's finals. And this year, Stacey Schmidt is going to be facing off against Pam Maloney. Pam, what kind of pie are you making this year? Well, I pumpkin? made pumpkin. Fucking a fascinating. Pumpkin. Great. What about yep. you, Stacey? Pumpkin. Um, well, I made. Also, a pumpkin. Pump- fucking nail biter, I can tell. All right. Well, everyone here is going to watch two women bake a fucking pie. So I'm going to go in the back and hope to do enough meth to give me the courage to end it all. Mine has pecans. Nobody cares. Nobody ever. Mine has mocha whipped cream. I will I will swear on my daughter's grave I will take you both with me. <laughs> you want to do some nitrous? <laughs> yes. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open this time on Casey and her sister at the park where Casey is breaking the I'm fucking Sam Harper news. <laughs> yep. That's it. And it, she basically just names the plot. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> Sam, the bakery. I have to make an entire pie. I have a mom. My life is spiraling out of control. This is, I'm a, I feel like I'm at a four. I'm at a four. <laughs> <laughs> one, one could say this, this reaches the five. Well, it doesn't reach five, but it almost no, no, the four. A, yeah. Like a four and change. Yeah. At, at one point, she says, things are tight right now. And I wanted her sister to be like, less so thanks to Sam Harper. Am I right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. You're not stopping me. But You're not stopping me. <laughs> You're lying. You're lying. So, all right. So Casey and Sis go back to the bakery. But mom and dad are already sitting there in the bakery like they're about to have an intervention. Right. The hotel apparently called and told them they could go fuck themselves with their pumpkin scones. Honey, I I don't know how to tell you this, but the stakes of this movie have expired. (laughs) (laughs) And we were in charge of it, which is really crazy. We didn't have to do this. Still have been stakes in this movie, but this one had to be put down. Uh, All the hotels called the Hallmark Channel and we lost permission to use the word. Hotels. <laughs> Anyways, murder suicide. It's the only way. Come yeah, on, let's oh do this. god! Like if they had walked in on the next scene, mom's just hanging there, swinging back and forth, or <laughs> some shit, or whatever. This movie would make so much more sense. Because yeah, mom's like, "Yep, the bakery's gonna close down. I have some stuff to do in the garage. I'll be <laughs> back." Oh, I'll be back. Also, there's the great moment where dad offers <laughs> to not golf. Maybe he's like, "Hey, um." Do you want me to not golf because your business is closing down? Well, I think, okay, goodbye. Yeah, I'm not right, going to right. go fuck he's a guy. So, he's so concerned that he almost doesn't just leave and go play golf. But he does. <laughs> <laughs> because this movie is made for a Hallmark viewer, and the best boomer dad they can think of is a dad who almost doesn't go and play golf. Yeah, right. <laughs> And by the way, by the way, they're sitting in this bakery as this is all happening. That bakery is goddamn fucking hopping. If you can't make a profit of that many customers in your bakery, then that's really on you. Less meth, right? <laughs> Jesus. Or more meth. But yeah, one or the other, right? So Casey- Medium amounts of meth are the problem. That's what a lot of people <laughs> fail in their business because of medium <laughs> amounts of meth. But yeah, but Casey sure feels like a failure. But if, man, if she could win that pumpkin pie contest, she could turn it all around. Ah, <sighs> so there's this is the actual line, right? The mom's like, "Oh, honey, you don't have to keep doing that contest," as though there's some other plot that we could shift to or whatever. And the actual line from Casey is, <laughs> "No, I started this thing, 
and now I'm going to finish it. I wanted to cut to her like arming up like John Wick or something. Yeah, but it's spatulas <laughs> and stuff. Also, this is where she's like, okay, here's my recipe for pumpkin pie. You ready? Pumpkin, sugar, and milk. Oh, wait, that's all the fucking recipes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, okay, this is a super important scene. We have Casey baking when Betty stops by for a muffin and has to eh, go back to the bathroom for mysterious reasons. Is she going she gonna to shoot heroin? Is she going to die while masturbating? We don't know. We don't know. It's mysterious. <laughs> I love how she walks in. She's like, yeah, so just uh, normal hello. Hi, normal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, are you okay? You're being weird. I need to shit now that I've said hello normally. <laughs> hello. I was like, okay. That's, yeah, no, that's normal, Betty. She needs to shit now. She always needs to shit now. That's fair. Go ahead. <laughs> Classic Betty. She comes in for her normal hello and her 45 minutes shit. <laughs> so, it's like I'm just saying, I get it, Eli. Betty. I yeah. get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's knocking on the door. I'm in there. Too late. Beat you. <laughs> Normal hello to you, guys. <laughs> so, Through the door. So meanwhile, um, we have Sam giving his presentation to the investors, and they love his business plan, but is it outside the box enough? <laughs> They're like, you made fucking pretzels for us, man. Pretzels? You went to the Cordon Bleu, the thing you came up with for this restaurant group meeting where you would impress us was pretzels. They're stuffed. Okay. okay. Stuffed. But imagine if you were sharing those pretzels with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Also, this is where they repeat that that fake thing about 90% of restaurants failing in their first year. And just one time when people quote that fake fact, I want them to cut to like just restaurants closing overnight. People lose it. Oh, my God. People walking in. <laughs> the restaurant closed halfway through your reservation. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I fell straight through the floor. We just walked in and we fell down. I don't know what happened. It was crazy. You know what they say? 89% of restaurants don't have floors. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, but yeah, but he says to the investors, he's like, hey, you know, uh, what if I went on pie heaven? You know, Guy Fieri's little brother. And they're like, we know. It. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we would give you all you're talking about of the money. We would go and rob fucking banks to give you money if you were on pie heaven. And he's like, OK, cool. Good to know. All right. Good to know. And then we have one scene of Betty backing slowly out of the store. And again, like this is going to pay <laughs> off. But bet. Be you guys thought that Betty clogged the toilet, right? Right. That I, mean, like, I wrote in my notes, like, we all know what it means when you're that eager to leave the building after you use the bathroom. We're friends with Eli. <laughs> so, sorry, I got to go. I did not clog your toilet. There was a guy there before me. Uh, his name was Hammer's Bakery. <laughs> Goodbye. Scone. Mr. Scone. Normal goodbye. Bathroom experience went great. Bye. <laughs> so. All right, so now Sam and Casey are chatting about the same goddamn thing as every scene they've had together, but in a different park this time, right? Sam's so, like, hey, how's the plot coming along? <laughs> so fall, huh? Pumpkin yeah, right. spice lattes and it's sweaters. So How much time is left in the movie? <laughs> just let me, I mean... Seriously, they were just like, all right, what's the whitest scene we could possibly yes. fucking do that we haven't already done? And they were like, well... All right. All right. Uh, white people. I mean, uh, gazebo coats from L.L. Bean. Right. Yeah, yeah. Pumpkin spice lattes. Small town in Ohio. Foliage. Did we do the foliage? And the gloves that have the mitten tops on them, but are still fingerless gloves. Yeah. Yeah. And that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. You can actually still swipe on your smartphone with those. Yeah, you can. Hmm. So, yeah. So they sit there talking about how wild it is that this pumpkin pie contest has made such an interesting framework for an entire movie. And then. They have the same. Is that a Confederate statue? Let's protect it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. You want to take a picture in front of it for Instagram? I do, but let's put it only on our story, not on our actual Instagram. Yes! <laughs> let's plank it. You want to yeah. plank it? Oh, yeah. Let's meme really? it up. Planking? I'm just like Topical. SpongeBob. It's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're we're back at the fair. All the kiddos are carving pumpkins, and Sam and Casey are making fuck me eyes at each other. Right, and that's the whole yeah. scene, by the way. Her sister's like, it's very obvious that you two are fucking when you look at each other. And she's like, is it? Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. All right. But again, 
this almost sets up tension. She's like, hey, people can tell when we make fuck me eyes at each other. And he's like, why don't we tell people about our relationship? And she's like, oh, yeah, let's just do that. We'll tell people yeah. about our relationship because we're not the fucking Montagues <laughs> and the Capulets. So we can just fucking do that. Tybalt's not going to come stab you in the fucking tit. Yeah, let's just tell our friends <laughs> so. that we're fucking. So now she's going to sneak around behind the tilt world of Give Sam a hand job, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I wish. But Unfortunately, they just do a weird closed mouth peck. Yeah, but gossipy Betty sees the two of them with that uh, that uh, closed mouth peck. And she's such a gossip. Now the whole town will know. Fucking Betty. Yeah. So, all right. So now I guess we've pulled the trigger here as this movie would have it. And uh, now mom knows about Casey and Sam and Mom knows about Sam and Casey, and each of them must face their mother's wrath. Right? And it is medium. It really is. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm mad at you for a bit. Me too. But not like really mad. Like, we'll still drive home and we'll stop yeah. off at Chick-fil-A. Not like we kicked your little brother out of the house for being gay mad. But like, you know, I'm disappointed. Yeah, right, I'm disappointed. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You get no new gazebo shirt for winter. <laughs> <laughs> he is obviously fucking you to sabotage your pie, though. For the yeah, contest. I just want you to know. Yeah, yeah, no, that is that is fucking phase theory of the case. Yeah, and also Lydia's pretty sure she's only fucking him to distract him from his cinnamon strudel crust. Right? Both of them. Jesus Christ, these fucking people. <laughs> which means that because these people have been feuding for years, which means that. Fuck plots have at least been part of the game plan at some point. Right, right. right. One of them has fucked someone to get in on the other one's strudel <laughs> crust. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it, 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 then we have the moment where, like, Sam is talking to his mom and Casey's sister overhears what sounds like him saying that he was only fucking her to win the contest. The plot thickens. And, and then immediately... Clumpy thins again because she's like hey is that what happened and he's like no and she's and she's like oh okay yeah well yeah right we we have the fucking <laughs> plot mach machinations on fully automatic because immediately after that we cut to casey talking to her sister about that and clearing up this misunderstanding uh-huh and then <laughs> immediately after she clears up the misunderstanding the television puts in a plot twist because they've accidentally solved the movie yeah Right, right. She goes like, look, you go need to go see Sam and clear this up. There are only 15 minutes left in the movie. We injected the wedge way too late. Um, so she goes to the... And, and even then, she's, they're like, do you have any idea where he might be? And she's like, we have not established a place where he goes, no. So I'm just going to say the name of a bar. He might be at my bakery doing business baking lessons with me. No. Nope. <laughs> he's been in zero other locations, so he's at... <laughs> Oh, Irish is watching sports, and that's as specific as we're <laughs> legally allowed to be. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to the grocery store and not know how to pick a spice. Yeah, exactly. So, so they go to the he goes to the bar and he goes like, "Yeah, no, that's you misunderstood. Your sister probably should realize that when you only hear a snippet of a conversation, you really don't understand the nuance." And she's like, "Right, right, but if we resolve this now, there will be no ending, right? Like this, we still have to." Like the credits aren't for 15 okay. minutes. No one yeah. no, no one wanted to be in the credits, so... We're going to resolve it now anyway. There was <laughs> a pause, and then he, he would have said something, but he didn't, and it's all fine. There, there's no there's no tension. Nope. Yeah. No, it's so... and Okay, and now they have to, like you said, yeah, they have to inject a plot twist here because they've just solved the fucking movie. So the bartender turns to the two of them and says, hey, why are you two on the local news? But they aren't. They are not. Right, like this is... This is their fucking movie. They could have put the two of them, but they're not. It's Betty on the local news. What? What is that? A plot twist on the TV? Yeah, right, right. He's like, why are you two on the local news? And why are you a single, overweight, elderly white woman? What? Oh, I, th I thought he said, why aren't you on the local news? Because he saw Betty on there. Oh, and, oh. and he's so dialed into the goddamn contest because that. that's what this town yeah. lives and dies he's on. Like, okay, all right. Dude. Dude, Betty's doing a fucking eight mile on you guys right now. She's got your recipe and she's announcing it ahead. So now you can't do it because it's out there and it's clear that you'd be copying her. So there you go. Yes. Would you like another milkshake glass of beer that I've served you? 
Did you see that? It was in one of those like like swirly, like footed, clearly a milkshake yeah. that like like with like extra beer and a metal tin on the side. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, the, the swizzle straw was a weird choice. The swizzle straw was a weird choice. <laughs> and he also drank some beer without ever drinking it during this conversation. Mm, yeah. The beer goes down like four or five sips. <laughs> but yeah, Betty has stole the pumpkin silk chiffon pie recipe from Casey. And she stole the ginger snap streusel crust idea from Sam. So now they must unite to take Betty the fuck down. And let's be clear, if the last 15 minutes of this movie were them plotting and executing Betty's murder, mm -hmm. again, this would be my favorite movie. Yeah, they had a lot of chances. A lot of chances to get back on the rails with this one. Also, couldn't they just make the same recipe better than Betty, the one that she stole, that's theirs? You would think. That, you know, <laughs> he's a Gordon Blue Train chef and invented? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so but now they have to go tell their moms about Betty's betrayal. So we're going to start with Faye. She learns, she finds out that Betty is nothing more than a pumpkin pie opportunist. And in order to take her down, Faye and Lydia must set their differences aside and form the pumpkin pie Voltron that they were meant to be. It's the I gave up that life scene, but it's their children. You know, I said I'd never bake again. <laughs> Not after Guatemala. Come on. You're the best baker in the business. We need you just one last time. <laughs> I won't go back to that life of c cooking a, a pie to, to get next to her in I, a room. I run a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> but they agree. They're going to bake together. How would this be helpful? They're I just, don't like you, you. It's not like Voltron. You don't get to combine. You're just two different. All right. Uh, you. Yeah, you spin we clockwise. We go back and forth, you, stirring. You I'll, stir I'll, I'll, I'll stir one st and switch. Stir. Right. I switch. Stir. Well, you, this if, is... if nothing else, you've just reduced your chances of winning, right? You had a two-thirds shot, and now you have a 50% shot, if nothing else. It's the dumbest idea. And by the way, their fucking plan, this is an idea, not a plan, by the way, their fucking plan is for their moms to come up with a better fucking pie. I have a plan. Let's outsource <laughs> the plan. <laughs> what? I got it. How about you guys? What do you guys think pumpkin pie should be made out of? Is it pumpkin, milk, and fucking sugar? <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on. Hold on. Pumpkin pie wonder twins unite. Form yeah. of no, it's milk and sugar. Yeah, it's and, no, milk it's and sugar and pumpkin. God damn it. We just okay. <laughs> But luckily for they them, get, though, they get into a Jaeger like Pacific Rim. To <laughs> <laughs> make some pumpkin pie in the drift, motherfuckers. Let's do this. Beat up a Kraken. Idris Elba is making a pumpkin pie by himself with blood running out of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But no, but they're going to enter as a team because there's nothing in the bylaws that says a dog can't bake pumpkin pies. Airbud law. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. There's an a priori law about tournaments that says you can't combine teams <laughs> for the finals of a tournament, though. We would like to combine all the teams so that the winner of this World Series this year is sports Everyone. in general. <laughs> yeah. No, I want I want to inject Heath Enright into the Air Bud universe where if it's not specifically written in the goddamn rule book, you can get away with it. I just want nothing in the Bible that says you can't stab Betty. <laughs> there you go. Wait, no, it actually says that. Wow. Okay. Can't huh. stab Betty. Weird. All right. But yeah, so their moms have come up with a with a better pie, and now it's time for a Making the best pumpkin pie ever montage, right? By the way, the conclusion, spoilers, is pecans. They're yep. going to put, they're not even going to put them in there. They put them on the pie. Yeah, right. Because nothing says pumpkin pie like instead making a pecan pie. Yeah. You know, pecan this, pie. What this if was we, the Voltron thing. This was it. Yeah. Faye was like, I've got an idea. Wait for it. I'm the green lion. <laughs> Pecans. And everybody's like, get the fuck out of here! This is amazing. I'm shitting myself. But of course, all right, so as they're where they're making this uh this amazing pie, there's a moment where Lydia catches Faye and dry storage so they can have a moment. 
And it starts off with Lydia going like, Faye, this might be long overdue. And I so want her to pull out a fucking gun. <laughs> oh, or kiss her. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Either way. Also, this movie is so badly written that she's like, I'm sorry. And she's like, well, I didn't. Let me finish. Just let me finish. Yeah, God damn it! There's only eight and a half minutes left. I've got to get this out. Right. She, she, let me finish. And then she's like, I'm sorry. That was it. Yeah, no, I am. I just, I am. <laughs> Honestly, you could have interrupted. You've <laughs> always been better than me was kind of what she was going for here. Mm -hmm. And then there's the giant pause. It was like, yeah, you've always been better than me, Faye. Two, Did you want to follow that three. up with anything based on the <laughs> Super Did you know what you would say next? <laughs> no! No! You're just, I can see you talking out of the side of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she tells, she explains to Faye that they never, she never wanted them to have a Shakespearean feud over this, and now both of them cry so the movie can end soon, right? It's like the fat lady singing an opera. The, the old mom's lady crying, crying in, the in a Hallmark, Hallmark movie. Yeah, yep. right. So anyway, so after a long night of baking and teary-eyed confessions, they finally landed on the perfect pie, pumpkin cheesecake pie with a pecan caramel topping. And I just so wrote, not, that's fucking not pumpkin that's, pie. That's cheating. It's cheesecake. Not pumpkin pie. It's cheesecake. That, that sounds great. It sounds busy. But it's just it sounds too busy. Cheesecake and pecan pie. Yeah. yeah. And slightly orange. For the pumpkin pie contest, I'd like to submit Pot roast. Yeah, mac and cheese, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right. Think it outside the box. Um, but yeah, no, but it's it's delicious. And then, like, suddenly the characters in the movie realize, oh, fuck, if we've already come up with the perfect pie, then this movie's... Oh, oh, but can you recreate this pie at the festival? And she's like, yeah, no, we wrote down what you guys did. We'll just do the same. It's a list of things you do things. in order. It's, it's like, like an, an equation. equation. Are, there <laughs> <laughs> Are there more or less than 14 <laughs> steps? Less. Oh, okay, good. All right, I'll be good. I got this. I'm good. <laughs> so. All right, so they head to the festival together. The whole town claps for them for reasons that are never explained. <laughs> Woo! Pie! So, yeah, and then they have to tell Betty. They're like, sorry, Betty, your competitors teamed up against you. And she's like, that has to be against the rules. They're like, well, we don't have a specific rule. She's like, it doesn't fucking matter. Just logic would dictate that's against no. the rules. Yeah. Do that in tournaments. No, they teamed up. That's what happened. It's <laughs> stupid because that actually makes it harder for them to win. They can yeah. have two teams competing right. against. Yeah, but cool. no, it's legal. It's not. There's no rule against it. They can't stab you, though, if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> hey, we did write that one. <laughs> we checked. <laughs> what happened, by the way? You must have been stabbed once in one of these, because that's written down. Oh, now. yeah, 1997. No. That was a pin cushion by the end of that contest. Let me wow. tell you. So, okay. So, yes. You're a bitch. <laughs> we're about to get yet another baking montage. But during this baking montage, Casey notices that Betty has a photograph of the recipe that she stole from Casey, which could be evidence that she stole it from Casey. You see? And in this town, that that'll cause a instant death penalty. Oh yeah, they right, will just no, hang no, they her. They will have her on tied upside down like Mussolini at the end of this. Yeah. yeah, they will draw and quarter Betty if she can prove her guilt. <laughs> so, and they can because you know they have a graphologist ready to go. Yep. to check the hand. Uh, yeah. Spoilers, but yes, they do have a graphologist <laughs> ready to go. All right, so now they go to present their pies, but before the judges render their decision. Casey would like to confront her about that little recipe she's got, right? Also, real quick, both of the pies look like fucking dog shit. They do. They look so goddamn awful. <laughs> They're all what? cracked and shitty looking, and the pecan... Doesn't matter. ...whipped cream is very clearly just them <laughs> squirting whipped cream four times around the yep. pie and then putting a yep. pecan on that whipped cream. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Looks awful. You don't like handfuls of whipped cream with a pecan? In it? I mean, I like handfuls of whipped cream. But, uh, it's basically health food. So <laughs> if you put a pecan on it, yeah. Some protein. Um, so, yeah, but she explains, she says, hey, you know, look, here's my original recipe and there's the photo of my recipe that she's been working with. And the town gasps. They cover their <laughs> children's <laughs> ears and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the goddamn judge, the suicidal judge that Eli's had so much fun with, demands from Betty a handwriting sample. You're under arrest. I'm a pie yeah, judge. Right. Citizen's arrest. Wait, but number one, like, why would you need that? Like, very clearly you have the fucking photo of the recipe and she's holding the, you wouldn't, 
what would that solve at this point? But then, yeah. But then Betty has this incredibly sad moment, right? Her, her, if it wasn't for those meddling kids moment, <laughs> she's like, I'm just a sad widower and I just wanted a chance to one day be recognized for my efforts. And everyone's like, fuck you. And they throw shit at her. <laughs> You know, I've just been so alone since my husband died. I thought winning a bike of fuck you. <laughs> All right. Yep, that's fair. Sure. <laughs> and then and then the judge is like, well, Betty's disqualified. You all know what that means. Kiss. The, the movie's <laughs> over without any real victory. Our climax is default win. Why are our movies all ending in ties now? Yeah, the fact that they made the pie is superfluous. Lydia and Faye are sitting over there going, God damn it, we resolved our 10-year conflict over this. Didn't even matter if you made a pie. You could have just brought one from the fucking grocery store. You could have said shit instead of pecans, and we still would have won. <laughs> Same thing. Yep. And then the judge goes... I think it's time for the winners to kiss. And I really wanted that to be like something that happens every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how the golf buddies started off. You know, they, they actually were. Yeah, they oh. were a baking team once as well. This is why Jonestown happened. Some town <laughs> was watching their 200th annual pie contest and Jim Jones showed up and they were like, yeah, I like what this guy's selling. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so the town cheers for their new favorite son and daughter. We're not done yet, though. We have to fast forward to one year later at Sam's Big Restaurant. Now, his job at the restaurant is to carry the food from the expo to the server. <laughs> to random servers. He's a people person. That's how restaurants work. You just hand random food to random servers and tell them where it goes. Yeah. It's the best system. <laughs> Well, what you do is you generally have some sort of bucket brigade going out the door. <laughs> what was that? Shit? Well, and the big finish here is like, all right, Sam's the chef of a restaurant in sub suburban Ohio. He fucking made yes, it. He right, did right. the cordon bleu right to Vanilla Plains, Ohio. <laughs> crushing it. He did manage that, Denny's. Yeah, exactly. And Casey made it from Wharton to... The business person of that restaurant. Yes, yes. She businesses it. He handles the cooking. She handles the businessing. That's why you go to the Ivy League. <laughs> and, and by the way, Faye and Lydia bake together again. Oh. Oh. And then we, like, we fade out. like, And this really just underscores how bad the writers are in this we we like pan away from them standing in the doorway of their restaurant smiling together and we see the sign and it just says sam and casey's restaurant <laughs> sam, sam and casey's bakery and restaurant of food <laughs> place <laughs> where there is food sometimes stop writing have i said stop e writing e stop quizzing. writing what i'm saying down ideas are different than plans. <laughs> oh my God. Equals. Like even the most mediocre writer would have called it like outside the box or something like that. Like would have come up with some damn thing from the movie to call it. But no, it's just Sam and Casey's restaurant. God damn it. That's this whole movie though, right? This movie is settling on calling your restaurant Sam and Casey's restaurant the movie. <laughs> Inside the to go box. The restaurant. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for our review of Pumpkin Pie Wars, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to go back for seconds. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. It's Christmas Tacular time. Okay, yeah, that's the one that you. So the get first away movie with. in our Christmas Tacular will be Savior. Oh, okay. Which is yeah, it is a British. I'm going to go ahead and say student film without the school. Uh -huh. About what if Jesus was born in <laughs> modern times? Oh, all yeah. Right. Somebody went to Prager U of film. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Prager film you. Yeah. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 223 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Idiot, Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Crowd, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social 
social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, Digging People Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. Collector Man 101 saw this movie and wrote the following comment on YouTube. He said, I relate to Sam. I went to culinary school for two years studying things like making sushi and other stuff. And yet he was stuck in a family thing. But I plan on opening my own restaurant with a good friend of mine in the future. Well, there is great movie. At least it's <laughs> at least it's bright for him. Betty went on to kill herself in the bathtub that night. Eli watched three more Hallmark movies of his own volition. You just let it keep rolling, huh? Yep, I just watched them. They were great. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.